uh, things left, Paul. We'll have a feedback, a very informal feedback uh, from the from the hands-on people first, and um, and then from the observers as well. Um, we would want you to critique us as well. I have been. We were just discussing. I think it's important that we know uh, what we need to do better. That's more important than knowing that we have done something good. To be honest. Um, so we'll have that. Uh, we'll give uh, maybe 20 minutes to that, or something like that. Following that, uh, we have uh, the endoscopy staff has decided to have a go at me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling. Usually my feelings are not incorrect f about these things. So there is going to be that little, some kind of comedy here. Um, and uh, I don't know how long that will be, Sajda, half an hour? Five minutes. That's all. Okay. So because they were quite scared. To no, no, no. I give them total freedom to say whatever they want. <laughs> this is their day. Tell them they can utilize it. Um, so we'll have that, and after that, we'll just have some closing remarks. Um, prior, you know, certificate distribution, and we'll be done for the day. Okay. So. Um, um, starting with you. The bad things or the things that you want us to do better. Not not using the bad word, but I'll say things that you want you think that we can do better or we the should the bad and the ugly. <laughs> uh, one thing uh, is that uh, we have been talking about the things that we can improve on this course. As we discussed previously, uh, procedure is one part which was covered very well, but I would like it to be rather than at least six to eight cases that would because the level of the training and the supervision when we go back is a lot different from what the uh, Paul has said and Dr. Bakar has said the type of the supervision the trainees are getting there so we'll better uh, utilize this time this is a suggestion one thing was other thing was the reporting uh, aspect which we uh, had discussed and I had a suggestion for it, I discussed with Dr. Uh, uh, Sharyar that we can had a, uh, have a session of uh, video clips in which the trainees are there, the clips are shown, they had a report, they have to write it on a video clip. Okay. You can we have few video clips there and they have to write it the report so that, that will improve the reporting uh, of their, uh, that was one of the suggestions. And uh, having two faculty members or three for that matter you were being a passive faculty member F four or five would have been better for the every trainee uh, particularly hands-on should have one to one with the trainee even if it, they are not performing live there so they should uh, keep on having different kind of not necessarily the whole session should be attended by all of them individually we can uh, have this uh, as I we are talking about the reporting if I am not doing anything you can come back and okay have the supporting session and all the, the sessions with the therapy or uh, the theoretical session, the basic theoretical, we can add on the theoretical content of the uh, uh, course by having individual timing and uh, well, it was a very good course, I would, uh, I would like to appreciate that it was a very good thing. I personally feel like I have gained a lot from where I came from three days back and now I, don't, I have to practice it, what I have learned, so that I can improve my skills by knowing the new technique, uh, right technique. Great. Uh, the reason why you had these two doing the cases, I'll be honest with you, because they are definitely much better than I am. So I thought the best thing was for you to have the best. And that's why, and the other thing was organizationally, it's easier for me to be out. And uh, you see, the problem is we can increase the faculty, but it's not very easy. It's very uh, gracious and, and, and uh, you know, really considerate of these two to come over all the way for us. Um, and so it's, um, it's getting the right faculty. Uh, we have support. Unfortunately, you, you guys have not utilized it at time. Um, we try and be with you all the time. One of, one of the faculty member is always with you. In this case, it was me off the room. And, um, you know, I think, uh, we are almost there with, with two more faculty members. So um, next time we can certainly increase the faculty. If that's in cases. Um, the only way to increase cases 
and, and you have made a very valid point, is maybe that we think about it, uh, you know, uh, for the next course, whether we can make it from three to four days. Uh, that's the only way. In this period of time, we really cannot increase the cases. I don't know, you know. One more of the suggestion could be with the uh, cases is, uh, though we have got from out of the city a uh, few people around, if that can be made, I mean, the, we cannot get them every month or two months or three months for, for that matter. But the candidates come can come after, say, we have made that offer to every candidate who has come so to attend. Not a single one has come after the course. Let me be very honest with you. That offer has been extended to everybody. But to date, not one has come back. So they all say this. It's open. If you have a difficult case, you couldn't do it and you think I could do it or Sajda or Shariar could do it. Just bring it over. Tie it with us so that we can, you can come do the case with us so that you can learn on the course. That offer is there. W timing will have to be adjusted because we are a very busy unit. We don't have this luxury. Uh, I think we, we, we've had very good three holidays. But this is not how we actually work. So, but if you want to do that, for everybody who's here from Karachi or even outside Karachi, if they want to be here, bring their case, uh, we will never say no. We will accommodate you. I, mean, I, I think they are very valid suggestions. And I, as Dr. Saad said, within the confines of three days, I think four patients per candidate are the maximum we with, can do with five people. Otherwise, then we'll be uh, rushing uh, the cases, yeah, right? And you don't want that because you do enough rush colonoscopies anyway. If you are serious about increasing the number of patients, then we have to increase it from f to four days, which, you know, I don't know, logistically might be more difficult, more expensive as well, and reduce the candidate number to four, which is the acceptable level which we do in UK. And if you reduce the number of hands-on to four, we will go through exactly the same number, like 20, but f five ca uh, cases per candidate. So that's one thing. The other thing is whether you move it from four to six is not going to make an awful lot of difference to your skill level. What is going to make a difference is doing it properly on a regular basis and having regular uh, uh, assessment carried out like in the form of formative DOPS. And I think I would strongly urge you to ask your uh, colleagues to do it or better still if you are not very far, uh, you know, we are living in Karachi or Islamabad to come to a center where they know what they are doing. So that is something which will make a big difference. And in future, which Paul has uh, very you know um, kindly suggested, uh, that we can do an uplift course. And the purpose of that would be that people who have been trained here now can come back for future, and we can give them a bit of coaching as well as, as do a bit of a formative assessment on them to see what progress they have made. And I think that would be something uh, which would be very useful. Uh, but the most important thing is that as you got our emails now, you should keep in touch with us and we would uh, bend over backwards to see what way we can help you. May I just add one more point? Remember, this is a basic, basic skills colonoscopy course, okay? So we are focusing on basic skills. The idea is to impart basic skills to you, to give you the right foundation. And you have to build, like Vakas had totally agreed, four or six. I'm not too sure it's going to make too much of a difference. Four and hundred should make a lot of difference, done properly. Okay. So uh, I think it was an excellent experience uh, having Paul and Dr. Vakar and obviously Dr. Saad and Yas. Uh, I, I learned a lot of basics about chronoscopy. And uh, probably, inshallah, I'll try to uh, uh, apply these basics uh, when I go back to my uh, uh, unit. And uh, that other thing is that the DOPS Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Wakar filled for me is very uh, helpful. Uh, I'll probably give it to Dr. Arif and uh, ask him uh, or probably give him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, probably uh, ask him. Whenever I do a procedure, please uh, give a feedback to me according to these talks. Because I, I, I see a lot uh, where I am deficient and uh, where, uh, how, to, how, how can I improve this. This is what I think. And, uh, and uh, obviously you are right, uh, uh, doing four or six procedures doesn't make any difference. 
it uh, the only difference that you do, uh, you do in a right and appropriate way that's I it can i just uh, advise you that you can do a google search on docs for you know, okay sir go to jack's uh, website and get the docs out there are docs descriptors which the four point out like you know how you rate as one uh, as number one it is in the USB. Yeah. It is in the USB yeah, for you. Yeah. yeah. USB has yeah. got DOPS uh, yeah, yeah. detail, so you you can go through the USB. Please just don't throw it in the bin. Yeah. I think it's important that you go through. The, you know, you you. It's important that you go back and look at the DOPS, uh, the USB, because it has all the material that. Uh, that Anything that you want us to do differently? I think it's okay. I think. Uh, Dr. Saeed. I uh, thank you, Dr. Saad. Uh, what I thought uh, previously, I was doing colonoscopy, and uh, I thought uh, when I'll, I will join a hands-on uh, workshop, I would. I just wanted to see what I am doing wrong or uh, what I'm doing I should not be doing. So I found it wonderful. And especially thanks to Mr. Paul, Dr. Wakar, and Dr. Saad. They helped me improve my techniques. And uh, it was well organized, well timed. And uh, the regarding the number of cases, uh, the cases number of cases were enough. But uh, the problem is what, with timing. If Even if the cases are three or four, the day the days should be increased. Whenever I get stuck, I should be helped. But because of the shortage of time, I should not be uh, back off. I'll just respond to that one. Most of the time, it was not because of shortage of time. There was no pressure on them for time. OK, we, 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 you would agree with that, I'm sure. The, the shortage of time is not. The issue is patient's uh, comfort. That is why we have the dummy. When you are playing with me on the dummy, I never asked you to rush. And I told you at that time when we were going through the dummy that learn these movements because that's what you're going to go and apply on the real patient. We can't allow you the same time on the, on the real patient, live patient, and exactly the same principle. Think your mother is lying there or father. How long will you allow somebody to play? Not too long. Not till they start feeling uncomfortable. So whenever they have picked up, and stopped or taken over, it's mainly because they realize that the procedure has gone too far or the patient's being uncomfortable or they are worried that, you know, patient might be slightly harmed. So that was the reason. Time was not an issue. Each case, almost, there was almost an hour for a colonoscopy for people who are used to doing colonoscopy in maximum 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I think. So, you know, time is a problem, not, time is not a problem. Patient safety and comfort is, is an issue. And uh, just because we happen to have patients who are obviously not complaining doesn't mean that we start abusing them. So that was the reason. Any other issues? No, thank you. I think I was strongly back then because you are going to become trainers tomorrow. And no doubt training of your junior is very important. But most prime important thing is patient safety and comfort. That must never be compromised at any cost. <coughs> That is our utmost priority. As physicians, the first you know, statement of Hippocratic Oath is first do no harm. So please do not harm or you know, put your patient in. Place. May I just add one more thing? You, know, you said you were doing colonoscopies. Imagine with us, you know, you had difficulty and we gave you almost an hour. You have to understand this is not a simple procedure unless you're, you've learned it to do. And what is generally very simple was taking very, very long time, uncomfortable, painful. That's what we do to our patients. So I think that's kind of a wake-up call as well. That look, there is a right way of doing something, a better way of doing something, uh, um, uh, you know, more humane way of doing something as well, and safe. So I think that is the concept we wanted to drill. And I hope that that's gone through. Uh, what's up? Uh, sir, it was a great experience and a uh, great learning too. Uh, I have already attended ERCP course. I have found both of them very useful 
in uh, better learning of techniques uh, with the experts like Dr. Vakar, Paul, and yourself, sir. And um, uh, a scope guide I have seen for the first time, and it uh, helped me in better understanding of the loops and uh, positioning uh, while inside the colon. And I think uh, I should thank all of you for uh, providing an excellent opportunity, sir. Anything that you want, you think we should improve on? Mm, sir, I think it was all okay. There is no further suggestions from my side. Fahad. Assalamu alaikum. Overall, it was a very nice experience. Um, well, I actually think that uh, um, uh, the thing that really helped me was that whenever I was not progressing, there was someone who would tell me that why I was not doing so. There are times that uh, and there were times, there might have been times when even if uh, Dr. Paul or Koka, you were not there, but one way or other, I may might have managed to go across, but then I would not have known what has happened wrong. What was most helpful was that at every step, when I stopped, I was told that why I was stopped and then why, what should I uh, do to overcome the obstruction. So, uh, but uh, again, the point is that uh, I would love to see this to be more. Uh, in the future, regularize in the sense that if I continue on with this persistent supervision, if I do things in the supervision, which of course sometimes is difficult because of the busyness of, of, of uh, the cases that we have, uh, then uh, that would be a great help because to maintain some standards, I would need to be some uh, supervision to persist. I don't yeah. think you can really complain too much about no. it. But no, no I, that's, <laughs> that's why I mentioned <laughs> that I was <laughs> no, 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 that's not okay. It was, it's for the general comment actually. <laughs> About <coughs> those who were here as observers, who endured and... Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's more than that. <laughs> he's one of my known favorites, so he's okay, he can get away with it. Um, observers, they have been very patient and uh, we have had this discussion. One quest first question to you is, do you think it's worth being an observer or not? Yes or no? Pella. I said, uh, being an observer, was it worth it or not? Yes. You think, it, you think we should continue with observers? Because we always debate at every end, every course that we have ended, that whether we should have observers or not. At this time, we have reduced observers. And we have reduced five. observers' ka number from 10 to 5. So, I wanted to know whether you think observers hone se koi fayda hai ya nahi. Is it worthwhile or not? No, <laughs> 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 apart from getting access to the next course, easy way. But what I wanted to know was, do you think the three days that you sat here and you observed, you got a, you got some chance on the dummy? Do you think was it worthwhile? First one is learned and you learned. You learned. Sir, up, up, sir. It was worthwhile uh, attending this course since I was a total novice and um, initially I thought I was swimming in the air but on the last day I got a good chance to uh, learn maneuverability and navigation. So I think it was very worthwhile. Uh, I just wish the faculty was larger, the suits were more and <laughs> patients were more so that more candidates could be inducted but that's a wishful thinking. No, no, that's not for wishful thinking. Day. That will for inshallah happen. Uh, God willing, we will have more suites, we'll have bigger thing. But uh, I obviously, this is, this is our only second course. So we are also learning. Um, as I said, you know, we are, we are also trying to get to know how to do this. And maybe, you know, uh, as more and more people get involved, then we may be able to do three instead of two courses. It was a very good experience. Initially, I was doing it with two hands. Now, I realized that it, it should be done with one hand and it rectified my skills. Good. Do you think it was worthwhile being yes. an observer? Of course. Um, yes, it, uh, it is. Uh, it has worth. And uh, initially, my mind was confused. And now, I have uh, some clear concepts. I know the basics. I know about the endoscope, handmade. And uh, now I know how to set my line to
to um, get into the training of this procedure. So it is helpful. Great. Paul, I want, to, I want your comments uh, from the, uh, you know, um, about the, uh, the candidates who were here just generally and uh, what do you feel about the course being, uh, you know, you're in and out of all courses, we can <laughs> see that. <laughs> I actually think that the, with regards to the course itself, if we were looking at how it's run in the UK, we have two to three faculty on the course. We have four people, candidates. We have no observers. Um, we, they do three to four procedures on the whole, four procedures. I agree with Saad that it's really, it, regardless if you do four procedures or six procedures, it's, it's actually principles applied. And it's n I agree that we all want to get hands on. I think my biggest concern is, is that when people come on to a course like this, it's not about certification, it's not a license to practice. This is an insight into a different technique in the sense a lot of people have come and they say that they do a two-hand or a three-hand technique. It's about if you actually look back at the beginning of the course and you think and reflect on how you were doing colonoscopy last week and you sit down and you think and you reflect on how you were doing colonoscopy today, if you truly reflected on what you've done, do you think you were doing it with less discomfort for the patient? Do you normally take an hour to do the procedure? So if normally you would take an hour to the procedure and you were causing as minimal discomfort as what was happening today, then you're taking an inordinately long time, etc. But if you're doing procedures in 15, 20 minutes and the patient is being lifted off the bed, today you've been shown that you can take a long time you can get principles applied and you can do things correctly. What I would advise you to do is go back to your units and I would say on the list that you've been doing, maybe to reduce the numbers that you're doing if possible. If that's not possible, do one or two correctly and to the techniques applied and then maybe get your supervisor to continue at the list because you will take longer to complete. As long, what will happen is, is that you will then pick up, improve. It's all about improvement. It's about improving standards and it's about improving yourself. From my point of view, I've thoroughly enjoyed the course. I enjoy the course because it's meeting new people, it's making new friends, but it's also uh, re-establishing friendships that you've got here already. It's how people, you see people change from day one and how people see you on day three and I can be a little bit different, I can agree to that, but I like people to be friendly and it's amazing if all those people that have worked with us, you will actually see performing the procedure with a smile on your face actually makes the time go quicker, makes the procedure more comfortable for yourself and the patient. So overall I thoroughly enjoy it and I thoroughly enjoy when I see people walk away with a smile on their face and have achieved an awful lot. And I think over the three days you have. Thanks, Paul. Look at. Uh, thanks. Uh, I would uh, echo most of uh, what Paul said. Uh, first of all, I think all the five candidates are absolutely fantastic. Some of the personal remarks I made, like you've not had your breakfast or whatever, ignore that. That was just to, to make the things lighter, right? What I would stress to you most important of all is that things we discussed during the procedure and some which of them which I brought on the top form is set your learning objectives and homework because that's where you are going to gain most. Like things on you know, optimizing your scope position, practicing talk because a lot of the time when I observed you were a bit sort of um, shy with the talk. You need to be more generous with it and give it, you know, otherwise it wouldn't work. And I saw that you were not, you know, I mean, normally, and when, even I'm still, when I do colonoscopy now, I usually get three knots into the umbilicus halfway up to the transverse colon, uh, and that's within five minutes of, you know, starting my procedure. So you need to do more of that. And that is something which would help you, because if you don't go give enough, so those are the sort of things you need to target on. Set you, your self-learning objectives, and because unless and until you do those, and work on those, you are not going to, you know, it's not going to progress. So please make sure that you set yourself targets, you know, 
that now I'm going to you know, write them down now while you still remember them and then work on them because that's how you are going to best you know, um, uh, gain our benefit from this uh, course. Secondly, as we've given you our email addresses, we are more than happy to help you in any way. Uh, you are more than happy to come back again for any uplift courses or anything because if there is a demand for it, we will do it. Uh, in fact, Paul suggested even this time that we do it, but we would, there have not been enough candidates. So those are the sort of things I would like you to. And again, as I said, you are going to become the trainer of the future. So you need, you must never compromise on standards. Set yourself high standards because that's the only way to progress. Because if you let go, then it will drop. Otherwise, <coughs> the course was a fantastic experience. We all, I always personally learn from it, from you people, from my other colleagues. Uh, they are all highly skilled professionals uh, who, you know, each time I come, I learn something from Saad, from Saida, from Paul, uh, from Sharia, everyone, and from the candidates as well. So it is a learning experience for us and which we would continue to, to you know, enjoy. Okay. Now, uh, Sajda, you want them to do whatever they want to do? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, now, as a course coordinator, I was requested by our technicians who felt that uh, they've always been uh, made to keep quiet and they were doing their work silently. So they wanted a chance to be given uh, an, an opportunity to say something to you people as well and to maybe me and Sharyar as well. So first of all, uh, we, I, I would request Zubair. Uh, Zubair is one of our storekeepers and he's, a very, he's very good at writing poems. So he has written something for this course, uh, which I'm sorry, Paul, you may, might not be able to understand since it would be in Urdu, but I guess Dr. Saad and Dr. Bakar can do their best to translate it for you. Okay, Zubair, please. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum. Aapki khidmat mein nazar pesh karta hoon, jiska unwaan hai nigebaan. Khidmat karo hamesha tum. Dunia mein ho tumara naam. Khidmat karo hamesha tum. Dunia mein ho tumara naam. Doctor Sayyid, Doctor Saad, mera tumhe salam. Mehnat bhot ki aapne aur khud ko manwaya. Maa baap ki duaon ne bhi rang dikhaya. Allah ne bhi aap par karam farmaya Is tarah dunia mein banaya ek mukam Dr. Sayyid, Dr. Saad, mera tumhe salam Gharibon ki khidmat ka beda uthaya Un ki khidmat ka sera sajaya Un ke liye charitable idara banaya Idare ka rakha nigebaan tumne naam Dr. Sayyid, Dr. Saad, mera tumhe salam غریبوں کی خدمت کو ایمان بنایا ان کی ہر مشکل کو آسان بنایا ان کے علاج کا خرچہ تم نے اٹھایا اور اس طرح پھیلایا نگیبان کا تم نے نام ڈاکٹر سعید ڈاکٹر سعید میرا تمہیں سلام کولونوسکوپی انڈوسکوپی سیمینار کروایا نئی جنریشن کو تم نے سمجھایا ای آر سی پی کیا ہے یہ تم نے بتایا بین الاقوامی سطح پر خود کو منوایا اور اس طرح دنیا میں کمائے اپنا نام ڈاکٹر سعید ڈاکٹر سعید میرا تمہیں سلام آج یہ ادارہ امید جگہ رہا